I'm not a historian. But you know, neither are you. So how about we the people learn this stuff together? Welcome to US 101. <sighs> Mr. President, I... I, I honestly I honestly don't even know where to begin. In case you guys haven't been following along, this past week has been nothing but stories and headlines that have led many in the media to begin discussing how the impeachment process works. He even some White House lawyers are apparently looking into it. And for this episode, guys, I could have easily went ahead and discussed how presidential impeachment works or why the 25th Amendment was even created to begin with, but no! I'm not, I'm not going to do that this week. For today's episode, I'm going to focus on something that I feel, I personally feel, is a lot more important, and that would be the unofficial kickoff to the summer season! Guys, this upcoming weekend is Memorial Day weekend. Nothing but beaches, barbecue, beer, buds, and bikini babes. Don't know why I threw that last one in there, but f*** it. It fit with the alliteration scheme. This upcoming weekend will mark a time when many Americans will sit in front of their TV and watch cars repeatedly go left. Incredibly fast on a racetrack, head out to the shops for all the Memorial Day sales and deals that are happening, and consume as much grilled food as humanly possible. But here's what I want to know. When and where did Memorial Day get its start? And for that matter, why did the United States decide to actually make it a national holiday? And on top of that, how did it even become a three-day weekend? For that, my friends, we have to travel all the way back to 1865. 1865, guys, the end of the Civil War and fields strewn with the dead bodies of Union and Confederate soldiers. And my apologies, guys, for the sudden shift into a more grim tone, but that is where our story begins, because Memorial Day originally was created to honor the fallen soldiers of the Civil War. I mean, here's a quick statistic for you. The Civil War claimed more lives than any other conflict in the entire history of the United States. Just how many lives are we talking about? We're talking about over 600,000 people died during the Civil War. Now, the official birthplace of Memorial Day is technically still unknown, okay? Many towns, many cities, many villages in the United States claim to be the first to have started doing Memorial Day ceremonies following the Civil War. But in 1966, the federal government and Lyndon B. Johnson declared that the official birthplace of Memorial Day in the United States was Waterloo, New York. Now, I've been calling it Memorial Day this entire time, but actually, that was not its original name. The holiday's original name was Decoration Day. Decoration Day was proclaimed by General John Logan, commander of the Grand Army of the Republic on May 5, 1868. He decreed that May 30th of that year would be the first decoration day, and it would be, quote, designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. And in fact, on the very first Decoration Day, General James Garfield made a speech at the Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia, and 5,000 people decorated the graves of 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers. Now, following Logan's proclamation, northern states quickly moved to make Decoration Day an official holiday, with Michigan and New York leading the charge. And by 1890, all northern states had declared Decoration Day to be an official holiday. But in the South, though, that was, that was not the case. The southern states refused to accept Decoration Day and instead honored fallen Confederate soldiers on a different day, not May 30th. And by 1890, it said that Southern Memorial Day or Southern Decoration Day shifted its focus. It wasn't just remembering the fallen Confederate soldiers of the Civil War, but now it was also remembering what became known as the Lost Cause, AKA the Lost Confederate Cause of that Civil War. But eventually the North and South would come together on Decoration Day and that would come following the end of World War I when it was decided that Decoration Day would honor all fallen Americans American soldiers who died in any war and not just the ones that died during the Civil War. And as for the name Memorial Day, that actually wouldn't become its official name until 1967. And then in 1968, Congress passed what is known as the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, which took four holidays, including Memorial Day, and moved them from their original dates to specified Mondays in order to create three-day weekends. Thus, Memorial Day was moved from its original date of May 30 
to the last Monday in May, which is why Memorial Day is now a celebrated three-day weekend. And this act actually went national in 1971. Now, come Memorial Day, you will see many familiar sights. You will see flags being flown at half-mast. You will see red, white, and blue on pretty much everything. But there is something about Memorial Day that you might not know about. I didn't even know about it until I started doing the research. At 3 p.m. your local time on Memorial Day, all Americans are asked to stop whatever it is that they're doing and just take one minute to remember the fallen soldiers that have fought and died in wars that America has been involved in. And I know that can be difficult. Trust, trust me, I know. Okay, one minute of silent meditation while you're being distracted by your phone or what's on your laptop or just, you know, living your life in general, it doesn't really allow for 60 seconds of just quiet reflection. But this year, how about you and I, we both just give it a try, okay? On Memorial Day this year at 3 p.m., your local time, for just one minute, let's just stop Close our eyes and just silently give thanks. Go ahead, close your eyes. Close your eyes with me. You don't have to stand and salute a flag. You can sit, you can take a knee, or lie down for all I care. But for that brief moment, let's remember those men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice by giving up their lives so that we could live ours. The men and women who put country before party or any politician because they believed in just how great America already is. The soldiers who sacrificed everything so that we could have everything. And that, my friends, is it for this episode of US 101. Thank you guys so much for watching and, and for commenting, for sharing, for subscribing to the channel, for liking the videos. Again, th this channel continues to thrive because of your involvement, and I can't thank you enough for showing your support. As always, you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, all those links down below in the description box. And I must give a special shout out to the Cool Kid Gamer. I don't know his real name, unfortunately, but the Cool Kid Gamer, you supplied today's uh, viewer intro, and uh, I thank Thank you for that. It was a job well done on your part. And if you guys want to submit your own intros for future episodes of US 101, you can send those videos to the following email address, ushistory1882 at gmail.com. I would love to see more of you guys introducing future episodes of US 101. And on that note, guys, we are all done. I'll see you next Tuesday for another episode. Happy Memorial Day. Have a safe and fun weekend. And to all of the soldiers out there that are currently serving, that have served, Thank you for your service. You guys are the real superheroes in this country. See you guys next week.